مساء الخير. Good evening and uh, hi everybody to this talk in Nur Riyadh. Nur Riyadh is a uh, program in Riyadh art which um, has uh, the objective to transform the city into a gallery without walls. Uh, involving Saudi artists and international artists in diverse places in Riyadh. Uh, this evening, this talk uh, is uh, a homage to two artists who have uh, a presence and that have enlightened the Saudi panorama with their uh, pioneering experience. In this talk, we will uh, focus on uh, some stages of their uh, work and production. Uh, the artist Ali al uh, uh, and uh, uh, also the daughter of the late Mohammed al-Salim, Najla al-Salim, and Dr. Iman al-Jibrin, which is one of the curators of Nur Riyadh. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So, Dr. Iman, I will uh, begin with uh, a question in order to make a homage to uh, Ali Al Salim and uh, to Dr. Ali Aruzaiza and their works in Nur Riyadh. Their uh, participation uh, has been an addition to Riyadh and to the locations who have been chosen. Would you please talk to us about this? First of all, I would like to uh, thank you all, uh, and I would like to uh, celebrate this moment and those who are uh, um, viewing us uh, today. Uh, I will be giving everybody a chance to talk uh, about all these great piece of arts, but I would like to clarify why we have chose those two prominent uh, artists and the locations. Of course, Nura Riyadh is a festival that has been adopted by the um, kingdom uh, in Riyadh, and uh, it gave us the chance to celebrate uh, this moment and uh, to choose uh, um, uh, freely the locations as well. It's very important to shed the light on the artistic movement in Riyadh. It has been always there. Uh, we cannot deny uh, how all the generations have contributed to that. We have limited uh, numbers, uh, and uh, the names that we have uh, has incited the right locations. Um, uh, Jusr al Masmat and uh, the national uh, um, the national museum was extremely important and the choices uh, uh, was very clear to us in order to celebrate uh, Ali Ziza uh, as one of the prominent artists uh, and his career has contributed so much in order to list uh, the new decorations and the visual arts, in addition also to his role as a designer as well. The first thing that crossed my mind when I had some uh, this uh, 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 location is uh, the um, the logo, the logo that he had designed. It's a logo for all the Saudis, and it's a, a national memorial moment as well. So we have to celebrate this moment and uh, to give him a tribute to what, what he has done all these days and this in, uh, heritage uh, that he left uh, behind. Uh, we will be talking uh, uh, about about the, the contest uh, and why we have chosen all that. Also, um, uh, the uh, Fahda office as well, all the people here in Saudi Arabia who um, studied are they already know that we have lots of documents and archives, the only archives that we have in Saudi Arabia, and they all got this, um, this stamp because this was uh, um, donated by him in his, uh, uh, in his life. And it was very such a suitable location to be chosen for this great event. And this uh, everybody can witness and see when they visit uh, uh, the places. And you will be highlighting this point as well later on. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Iman. 
Let's uh, begin with the first uh, stage in the experience of the artist Ali Rezaiza and uh, uh, Muhammad As-Saleem, the late Muhammad Saleem, which is uh, transportation uh, travel. Uh, uh, this was uh, part uh, of uh, their experience and part uh, of the formation of their identity. Beginning with you, uh, Mr. Ali, uh, the kid who was uh, born in Ishegar, who has memories of henna patterns and palm trees, uh, uh, the paintings on the walls, and coming back uh, uh, after traveling uh, in his homeland. Would you please talk us more about uh, this uh, experience, which uh, uh, was part of the memory of Ali Rezaiza. May uh, peace be upon you all. I would like to salute everybody and this great discussion that we were going to discuss about uh, Nur Riyadh, and it's considered to be an international event, a prominent event uh, in the Saudi Arabia. I wouldn't be long regarding this uh, point. Uh, I would like to uh, thank everybody for being here today and uh, viewing. I will not name anybody. They are already known. Uh, my childhood and uh, the university, um, before the university, I was in a, uh, in a village. I used to live in a village. It was a simple life. I don't know. If uh, I had this vision and some things that I was uh, that I was a bit different than my my colleague, my the other children in school, um, I was a bit creative, uh, also drawing maps uh, and drawing in the art uh, lessons uh, in school. I was I was really interested in this in this um, subject. There was uh, Egyptian sc uh, scholars and teachers. And accordingly, after I been uh, a teacher myself, an art teacher, and in the same very year, one of the first exhibition has been held in Riyadh, and I tried to resign and um, joined the art. Uh, institution, but somebody was against this decision for economical reasons, and they tried to convince me to um, not to ruin my future, my economical future that I had as a teacher. But I insisted uh, till I got accepted as a teacher in the art institution, and there, at this in time time, I have met lots of. Uh, prominent teachers from Sudan, Egypt, and Iraq. And one of the first teachers I have met, Abd al Halim Radi. And in, during these years, I have met also the artist, Mr. Salim, in his humble house with uh, some students. And I have seen his great work, and I was really inspired by his work. Um, uh, there was also some documents, stories, uh, and after that, I became one um, a teacher, uh, an art teacher in Riyadh, and I decided then that I have to um, have this urban shift um, to continue studying in, uh, by studying the historic history of, of art in all the generations and all the eras in a simple way based on white and black, black and white. Uh, and all these uh, uh, stories and documentation was uh, in lots of uh, uh, historical books that I was really interested in. And only then I just moved to Rome, and everything has changed then. Uh, my life has changed. My perspective has changed. I understood only then that I had to um, to work hard and I was very successful in my studies mm, uh, I uh, went through a lot of competitions um, exhibitions and I owned lots of primes and held lots of events as well uh, only then I just knew that I had to uh, give something uh, I give something special, and there I, I I've just got to know this decorations, this word, this terminology, and I tried to to study it more. And only then I just went back to Suwalem village, uh, and all these decorations that we had in our village 
where we used to see all these lovely drawings on the doors, on the gates. So there's only elements that contribute to the, to the um, architecture in Saudi Arabia. And with Dr. Skordia, uh, I said, I, um, I will be learning lots of, a lot of you. I want to benefit from your culture. And this is what he said as well. So what we had to do is to be brave, to be courageous, to, to learn more. We were hungry for more. In art, uh, through uh, uh, lots of events, uh, competitions, uh, uh, to uh, all to exchange the knowledge. This is a very important point. We have to exchange the culture, exchange the knowledge and the ideas. And after five years, uh, I had my thesis on decoration in desert, desert, sorry. Um, and I, ha I took my village as an example for my thesis. And I was asked to, to go to the village and take pictures. But I didn't have this possibility. So, so I went myself. And I took photos uh, myself on, in, of my village. I had uh, this uh, camera that I bought in Rome, and I tried to zooming in and zooming out and taking lots of pictures with of my village, of the peasants, of the farmers. I, I couldn't really take picture of everything. Could you please uh, allow me to interrupt you, Mr. Ali. What was uh, uh, the reason for which you returned from Italy to your uh, uh, village town in Oshiga? So. Well, my professor, that's why I came back in Rome. They asked me when she witnessed and she saw the pictures and the slides that I have uh, gave and the two lectures that I gave, uh, I had the right for like for, every student had a third uh, an hour that he can make a, um, a, a dissertation. And before he brings his thesis, each student can go to his hometown and can prepare for this, for this presentation. And I had this um, opportunity. So historically, I was really successful. And I had lots of information that, uh, that was really useful for my dessert in um, Malik Saud the University, also about uh, a, lo a lot of information regarding the villages, the art in these villages. And I what was really benefit. It was a collective. Uh, um, um, knowledge. Uh, I knew more about my village by then. Great. Let's go back uh, to this memory about Oshegar uh, later. But uh, let me now ask uh, uh, Miss Al Al Salim about the experience of her late father and the memories that he lived in Riyadh and the same experience in Europe and Italy. Would you please uh, uh, speak to me or tell me about the experience of your late father? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to um, thank everyone for being here. And I would like to uh, present something special for my father, I really, uh, we really miss him in this great prominent festival, and it, I hope he's really happy up there in heaven, in the heavens. I would like to tell you how he, how he um, came from um, in, in 1970, and how he uh, left Riyadh and uh, went to Florence uh, in order to um, study fine arts in uh, Florence Academy, Art Academy. Um, we used to live in Riyadh, but there's great similarities between my father's life and Boussamer in their simplicity, in how they took advantage of our traditions and heritage. The same thing, uh, my father, uh, the village boy, also having this uh, um, national, he, he loved his, his country, he loved his village. And then uh, when he left his village and he went to Riyadh, he used also to teach art. So it's a continuous process. And at this period of time, he used to uh, read lo a lot of uh, art uh, books. And he was uh, 
he has changed from uh, a teacher into a real art professor. Uh, by then, there was, uh, in 61, I think, uh, there was the um, TV channel that has been opened in Riyadh. And uh, at this period, my father started uh, um, the designing the decoration and the backgrounds in the Saudi TV. It's yet it was simple and according to what they used to have he uh, was very creative. I still remember this time uh, my father had a major leap after he has been to Florence because he found um, Oh, he, he, he really was really enriched in this uh, little town, Florence. Uh, it's uh, an artistic city, and still, even today. But Florence is very special because in every angle, in each angle, in each bar, and each museum, even its old houses was um, uh, inspiring. And it, it enriched my father. Um, and he used even to flirt with Florence. He was really interested. He was very astonished how this little town cared so much for the details, for the artistic details of the uh, 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 of the town. And it was um, the most artistic town for him in the whole entire world. So he was really interested in all the art arts that was based on the European cultures, but inside him, he also cared a lot about his heritage and how to transform these conceptions and notions into uh, into this uh, into his own culture, like the palm trees, the houses, the um, the the Arabian woman, the desert. Her the the Arabian woman with her abaya, so he used to select these specific shapes, specific colors, even the styles, the European styles. But he used to adapt them to his culture to go along with our culture, with our traditions. I believe that my father, he was, he stood strong with the traditions, but also he, when he went to Florence, he, he noticed that the, the people, the Italian people were very proud, were very proud of their heritage. And this is something very important that he learned from them and he brought it home. He selected the beauties. And one of the most, uh, um, uh, keys uh, is the heritage, and this is what he brought home. Talking about kids, <laughs> of course, yes, we are just trying to summarize uh, the biography of uh, Mr. Ali Razaiza and Mr. Salim. Uh, let's us uh, let's reflect now uh, on. Uh, uh, talking about Riyadh, Riyadh at the space. Summary on the individual and on the collective uh, level. Uh, uh, all of us as Saudis, uh, we uh, share the fact that Riyadh represents to us uh, a a uh, group of uh, memories of events. Uh, we have witnessed the, the progress of uh, uh, culture and artistic experience, thank, uh, thanks uh, to uh, King Salman. So uh, we, as a generation, we have seen this experience. We uh, uh, have also uh, enjoyed the experience of the center Daniel, and we are happy to see that the person who is behind the slogan of the Centennial and in logo and the currency we used in this period was uh, or is Ali Razaiza. So if you would please tell us something about the story of this logo and how it began. Wow, amazing. You made me go back many to, to memories. This logo, the 100th anniversary logo, this is such a good memory and prominent memory that we keep on our hearts. It's a special invitation and uh, a special invitation for 20 artists. 
their names were taken from the uh, the, uh, the Fine Art University in uh, Riyadh and uh, in Saudi Arabia. Most of them uh, um, couldn't contribute and couldn't uh, work on the logo. Some were absent, and the, the they gave us um, a brief about how it should be. For me, I wouldn't uh, praise myself, but the experiment, the experience uh, itself was um, was uh, very important, was incredible. There, some of uh, can be a visual artist, some can be poets, some become even musical uh, artist, uh, actress, actor, uh, but when we when I found out who was contributing and working on this logo, I just found out that there's lots, many different um, figures. It was, there was a long discussion and criticism if it was in a national event. But I replied back saying, we are here to give something to be proud of as a Saudi. It was... Uh, uh, there was a the second experience uh, as well, and they gave us the, the duties, the task that we have to carry out. And this uh, was uh, uh, an open, uh, um, open contest. I worked on this with an open-minded, with openness in culture and in, 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 in an artistic way. And I had this important thing in my mind in the history events, 1919, and uh, this is the framework that I gave myself. I shouldn't get out of this framework. I needed to connect some points to get the logo of the 100th anniversary, because this was, there was a debate on this point, uh, on how it should be. And the first logo was black and white in order to read um, the logo by the committee. In order also to see what is the main elements in the logo and test it. And uh, luckily, I was uh, successful in presenting this logo. And uh, there was many. Um, many uh, judges from the university and also the king uh, Salman and, and choosing the logo uh, and finalizing the logo. This was the last uh, step and we reached an agreement and for the final logo. I tried also to integrate all uh, the uh, missing elements and the king uh, asked me if uh, uh, I can uh, redo the logo if I had anything to add to this logo and I said no I don't have anything to add uh, to this logo and finally they have just said uh, and announced uh, that the logo was successful and as I said my name was one of in the British Museum, or one of the uh, on the list, uh, uh, that I'm one of the uh, artists that has their logo on a coin, uh, on a monetary coin. It's great, and I think that uh, all those who lived the, the experience of the centennial remember this logo, which was uh, uh, everywhere during our life. Uh, Dr. Iman, do you have a comment on this part? No, nothing. I don't have anything to add. But uh, I just want to shed the light uh, in a very um, quick way uh, because I think that the audience should understand is the tribute that we are giving to said Ali is uh, we're just trying uh, what uh, what uh, um, Professor Ali uh, did and uh, produced as art. So the event today that we are going to uh, witness and see today, uh, first you will see some lines, simple lines, 
that will show you his designs inspired of the internal uh, doors, um, glass doors that we have inside uh, the houses where nobody actually get the chance to see. And it looks like uh, um, a theoretical uh, and then we a uh, theoretical uh, exhibition uh, some people will uh, think it will be uh, it, it looks these designs it will look like uh, doors but uh, they are not doors and uh, we will witness also concave design uh, they, they even look like uh, um, beds it looks like the bed that Ms. Uh, professor Ali used and you will see how they are uh, animated as well, that you are part of the paint itself. And this is what was one of the most prettiest thing that we have witnessed in this project. Uh, as Ms. Khouloud, uh, we as a generation, the logo is extremely important. Uh, my high, in my high school, uh, um, I, I, on my certificate, there was the logo, there was the stamp of the, um, the anniversary, the 100th anniversary, anniversary logo. So it's very important for us. Exactly, and I uh, grab this occasion to invite everybody to go and visit the Masmak uh, Palace, uh, uh, the National Library where all these works are exhibited. Um, now moving to uh, Professor Najla, uh, uh, Riyadh uh, is uh, also an idea. And when we mentioned Mohammed Salim and Riyadh, we also remember uh, Dar al Fanun. Uh, which is one of the first institutions uh, uh, for uh, the artistic production. And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, even Mr. Ali Rosaiza has a memory uh, with this institution and its founder. Uh, would you please uh, tell us more about Dar al Fanun? Uh, after my father has turned from uh, t uh, Italy, he was one of the uh, Ministry of Communication in Riyadh, and he used to practice art, uh, painting, and he found uh, um, th there's a shortage in, in the artistic uh, products. There was no tools, there was no um, any tools any, uh, in, in Riyadh. So he ha used to go to Italy to have a stockage for his personal lead. Uh, that might be enough for four or five months because my father, uh, uh, my father used to go back every two three months. Used to go to Italy to visit uh, again, so it was a real challenge for him. How he can resign from the Minister of Communication uh, as a director for the. Um, design office and gets into this field to import um, artistic products, art products from Italy and to open a great institution, institution uh, that was specialized in um, selling artistic products, also like canvas, because even these in, in this period, um, there wasn't any in in uh, Saudi Arabia. So the, he had also a workshop. He made this workshop uh, for the frames uh, to build frames. Uh, so this institution was was there to help uh, the artists um, making uh, all the tools available for anything, for any type of art, uh, sculptures, uh, painting, uh, until now. Um, you can understand how these elements are important to carry out such a work. After this period, he found uh, um, uh, the need to have uh, a place, a location to carry out these exhibitions. There wasn't any, um, or there wasn't enough uh, in uh, uh, Riyadh. And here, again, uh, he established this art house and did lots of exhibition, local exhibitions, and um, exhibition for many artists, uh, local artists, also international artists, 
had taken part uh, of this uh, to exhibit their work in Riyadh as well. It was a collective uh, uh, hub in order to practice art, to have artistic discussions. It was a hub, artistic hub, collecting and gathering all the artists and including also uh, Ali Riziza. He can also contribute with his memories uh, because my angle, my perspective of uh, um, Dar al Funun, uh, the art house, uh, has uh, also my, my memories, but I would love also to hear Ali Riziza's memories as well. Anyhow, I can say that Najla has really uh, spoke uh, well and covered all the points. But I would like to add one thing is when the International Hall was built to include uh, all the artistic works, it was an international hall and it managed to attract international artists, held uh, many uh, artistic com contests and competition and it was really uh, high standard ones in this period of time and it affected the artists the artistic movement in uh, in uh, in Arabia, uh, Saudi uh, Saudi Arabia because usually it had it used to be in the hotels um in individual in, 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 in on an individual level but now this one this hall managed uh, to give the chance to all the artists, the international artists, to contribute. Uh, there were many in um, many artistic uh, um, sculptures, and it was also fought by the others. He had his own workshop, local workshop, that produced all um, the artistic work, uh, sculptures, aesthetic sculptures that can be assembled locally. And he promoted this uh, movement. I was very lucky myself to buy um, my, uh, my stock from Italy because I, I could travel, but sometimes I really needed some some specific tools and I had bought many tools and many um, many products uh, from him that's uh, great uh, now let's uh, move uh, to the third topic in this uh, discussion uh, about the multidisciplinary approach of the artists. And this uh, uh, is quite clear from your experience, Mr. Ali, and from the talk of uh, Dr. Najla. Uh, uh, so Mr. Ali uh, was an, uh, is an artist, a designer, and more. Uh, so your experience uh, uh, to live many uh, uh, experiences, not only artistic. Would you tell us more about this? I can't say something specific about myself, but I was, um, I loved bu uh, building small houses in our villages. Um, I just, I was inspired, and I'm, I, I, I love to work with these, um, with these houses and drawings and the decoration. Um, she may rest in peace. My grandmother. She used to uh, uh, serve us uh, tea in these little houses. And uh, I can remember that that when she used to serve us tea, there was flies that were gathered um, next to the to the sugar, and there was also this dust and and also this remaining of chalks so i used to this gave me an idea a, a great idea i used to take these chalks from the school and i dis dissolve it in the water and blend them together and do something artistic with it so it it's all connected memories with 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 everything and, and these childhood events it 
Also, my my uncle, uh, he played also a major role in my uh, life. Uh, how we grew up with the family to create something from our with our hands, and this is how I got creative with playing, with painting, with and when we used to uh, learn about this. Uh, under the, the, psycho the psychology section, when you when you when you study art, you study this part. You, you just get to get to understand how all these events, how all these memories shape your work, shape your how you your creativity. And these events makes the, mm, makes the impossible. I'm not an impossible. I'm not a. Uh, a, a, a an incredible artist, but all these factors contribute. I have also had um, many artists' friends, doctors, and art from 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 a medicine background as well. And we used to study together. We used to collaborate together. So. I knew I knew lot, a lot of them, and I learned a lot of them, and I became an interior designer. It's great to know more about uh, these sides of your life. So the art, a part of it, is part of any art is the design. So without the design, it, the design is a synonymous of art, an architect. Uh, who is very good at art and drawing, who loves drawing. He's the who is the one who can put everything into details and be a prominent in his field. And this is what the architectural design. That's why they enriched me. They enriched me. They taught me all these details without a, without a school. This um, this experience, life experience, is enriching more than a school. So I practice these designs. Mm, I practice some interior designs. I was very successful in these fields. So I was not only someone who opens an institution in order to sell uh, these pieces or to be to sell my product, but to practice it. Great. Uh, let's uh, proceed with Dr. Najla and uh, the experience uh, of her late father and uh, uh, Mr. Al Salim, uh, who was not only an artist, he was also a sculptor, a researcher, uh, a director. Uh, so he had many uh, roles. Would you tell us more about the roles of the late Mr. Salim? I think that the artists generally, they have this challenge that they, it doesn't stop them from art. If they practice anything else, it's always for the art, for, for an artistic purpose. So my father, may he rest in peace, after he um, fa uh, founded this institution and uh, this exhibition halls and, and also um, teaching how to use the canvas and how to use the tools for those uh, um, youth, artistic youth. He used to teach them also and direct them uh, how to produce, how to build the frames, the canvases, how to choose the right one. He was also a writer as well. He had a dedicated column in the Al Jazeera uh, press. It's a weekly, weekly article, weekly column, Kutuf Tanya. And he wrote uh, many documentaries, many books, books that document even the exhibitions. Uh, the art, Saudi Art House, in it, we, we, we found this book dedicated um, all, dedicated to all the exhibition, um, the timing, the work that has been exhibited in these exhibitions, even the ones that has been sold, and even their prices. It was even written with the uh, Real, the Saudi uh, currency. He also um, was an author 
about uh, author for a book that was written about was written about the principles of of art and the concept what is horizonism my father was very interested in um, making it possible for everyone uh, to practice the art, uh, making the tools available for everyone, but as well documenting uh, all the artistic works, not only his, but all the artists. I remember he had this art archive in his uh, atelier when he started with the exhibitions. He, he found it very important to document all these moments. He really also uh, was really interested in the cr in, in the critics, the art critic. He was very brave. We found many articles by Muhammad Salim uh, criticizing his colleague artists, not their personality, but their work, in also to incentive them, incentive the art the art movement. and to encourage those who are interested to in art. Discussing their practices, discussing their uh, artistic products, uh, making it this information available for everyone. So may he rest in peace. He was um, covering uh, many aspects, even the commercial aspects as well, not for the commercial as in commercial in itself for, for profit, but commercial of the artistic tools. He had many perspectives. This moves us uh, to another uh, topic in our uh, discussion uh, uh, in order to pay you and your experience a, a homage. Uh, the idea of going back to uh, uh, the roots, uh, to the past, uh, and uh, the point is that the artist goes uh, back to his memories, to the experience uh, in his community. So, uh, Mr. Ali, through my research uh, in uh, your uh, biography, I see uh, the significance of uh, uh, the window concept, uh, the uh, door concept, uh, uh, the museum idea, and uh, the philosophy of three plus one. Uh, so, would you please tell us more about this philosophy? Very good. All, e each uh, human being reaches a point, uh, a maturity point, where he, where he exhibits what he can and he cannot do. I, I saw this in Italy, how they preserve their heritage within the villages and how they they restore their heritage and how they discuss all this heritage in cultural centers and I, I, I understood the importance of history in these towns the history that left behind in these towns oh so I found our houses in the village, the, the transformation uh, uh, today in the kingdom and our houses, how they transformed from mud houses into skyscrapers and so on. So it's all, uh, what I wanted to address is the decor, the, the interior design uh, and the architecture. So I benefited, I benefited from uh, from this uh, from Italy. I had this uh, student colleague uh, who asked me, uh, "Where are you from?" I said, "I'm from uh, Saudi Arabia," and he was from Egypt. He was uh, Christian as well. But I asked him. I asked him. I told him, "I don't care about your religion. I care about where you come from." And this context makes me understand that the heritage, if we use the heritage, it's a massive source of art to, to, to design jewels, to design any product. We should be proud that the logo of 
the 20th, uh, the 20th uh, um, celebration is a shadow, the Najd heritage. I don't want to be to to talk too much about that, but the mud houses is a treasure that we do not understand how important it is. It shouldn't be concluded by who built it. It shouldn't be. Uh, it shouldn't be forgotten if we are if we transform our houses into um, elite and and better houses. It, what what we did we, we we didn't really care about these houses. We didn't restore it. We didn't take it into consideration when we uh, when we when when we've taken into consideration the new houses, all this heritage, all this history, the, the, um, the, the beauty of design, we don't have these anymore. It's such a pity. Only some certain areas, Kataif and some certain look, uh, places remain the same, in, but not everybody. Uh, for us, I think this is an incentive for the researchers in order to encourage the idea of going back to our local scene, our internal scene, and to look at the evolution of the architecture that we have been through. Uh, because uh, Saudi Arabia uh, um, went through uh, many uh, diverse uh, periods, and we need this effort in order to document uh, all this. No, I just uh, wanted to use what's uh, remaining of our time. Anyway, I really am thankful for the king uh, for restoring what is left uh, in El Muraba and restoring these old buildings. Every Everything has a, rela a relation with the heritage, and we should restore it, and we should take care of this one, and the artistic uh, awareness also, and the documenting this uh, heritage. All this documentation should be uh, within the uh, our Saudi archives, and here, we are sorry for what happened in the past, but still, we don't. Today, we can change this. We don't have no excuse. We have no excuses today. We need to document in this sec sector. Sure, and uh, your work, the presence of uh, your work in the Masmak Palace. Uh, is in itself a message and a support to the idea of linking between the heritage and the present and to witness what happened in this country in all those years. Uh, Najla, I uh, would like to focus on uh, something in the experience of Mr. Salim. It's difficult to do that, uh, and it's difficult to conclude uh, this uh, talk without speaking about horizonism and the role uh, uh, of uh, an idea uh, that stemmed out of the memory of an artist. So still now we are reading horizonism uh, in a different perspective. And Mr. Salim, uh, maybe he was a pioneer in uh, uh, giving a different uh, interpretation. Uh, we now, as artists and uh, art uh, historians, we are still learning that. So would you please talk us more about uh, the horizonism concept? Horizonism is um, a style that my father really um, specialized in. Uh, it was a fruit of the um, desert art, his style. I think horizonism is a, is a sister of mine. We grew up together. I witnessed the horizonism growing up with me. Each year, it used to grow with me, a year after year. The horizonism is a notion, is a concept, simplified concept, originated from the natural, the landscapes in the desert. Anyone who goes and visits a desert uh, away from the cities, they can witness how and, and see how 
the horizon is so wide as a like a closed circle, a wide closed circle, a void, and then the the city or the village in this period of time. When my father started the horizonism, it used the city used to look so small and humble. Even the tents and the desert animals like camels and sheep, they used to be be mixed as if they were dissolved and absorbed in the desert colors where the Bedouin or the desert man used to live and witness every day. My father has studied the first point, the, the starting point of identifying the Saudi, because all of us, we belong to the desert, and all of us, we love this beautiful nature and beautiful environment. So if we notice the first point of, of the starting point of the horizonism it started all from the nature from the la desert landscape uh, simple subjects such as tents animals bedouins camels it's also infinite with the horizon and gradually the colors from the subject in the very center of the painting into uh, upward and downward in a horizontal way because we can see the horizon is repeating itself from the middle of the painting to the upper to upward with this gradual granular graduation of desert color this uh, makes me uh, asking uh, Dr. Iman, uh, the work uh, presented uh, by uh, the late Muhammad Salim and uh, which was one of uh, his uh, special and exceptional uh, uh, works. Uh, 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 would you uh, please uh, speak uh, to us about the work in Riyadh? Ms. Khuloud, uh, we're tight with, with time. I will try to use the, what is left of time to, to conclude. So the message today, you know, Dr. Khuloud, when we uh, worked on this uh, point, we wanted to give a message through this discussion and the Nuriyad, a re um, uh, a rehabilitation, a re we need to read our history once again, the concepts that we had in the past, we need to revisit it. If we have different arts today, we shouldn't marginalize any different arts. We, we, there's some we need to include everybody, to be a collective uh, hub. We should give importance to any kind and any notion of art. Since you have just uh, um, mentioned uh, the 20th uh, um, anniversary uh, in Sado, the Sado behind the, the artist behind the Sado is a woman, and many think that the Saudi woman has no role. But this is not true. The woman, yes, she was a household, but. Still, we can witness this in the artwork. We, we, we can eliminate this limited idea of the woman. In the past, if in the past we don't have, uh, we don't understand the heritage, we do not understand our past, we cannot um, be anywhere today. We need to include all the age ranges as well. We need to be inclusive. And we need also to understand the importance of art and the work that has been done by S mm, Professor S Salim. It gave us also an opportunity to revisit, uh, to re to re understand what has happened. It was really easy to uh, um, use any international or any um, famous artistic pieces, but this is, was not our decision. The decision was to. Um, revisit the history. Najla Salim has helped us to open a, a hidden door, to understand uh, the designs, the design with the computer as well. He, and in his last days, he 
He used also the computer. There was also a screen in the family portrait. We have seen her also. And, and that, that was very prominent, was very uh, important to understand the visual arts, when in a time it was not even um, accepted in the society. Today, we understand how all this has happened with using the computer. Uh, today, we, we found out of all about this art through our floppy disk that we have found. So thank you, Nisreen, at least for me. It was a stand to uh, notify the new generation of how important uh, to revisit uh, the history uh, and what we are the, the nowadays lives all the art that we have produced till today, all the contemporary art. Thank you. I would thank to everybody that uh, I would like to thank all the art artists, the prominent artists also that who are is helping the youth, the artistic youth today. Uh, also, I would like to thank everyone. I am inviting everybody to go to Noura Riyad to visit the exhibitions, to enjoy these artistic uh, um, events. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Iman. And actually, the time uh, passed very quickly. Uh, so a last word, uh, Mr. Ali. I, I said uh, I said many points, but I, I still need to talk. I still want to, to say many things. Uh, please, I want to draw your attention to three plus one. Uh, this painting, I think I was not fair. Was with, with three things: um, the mud houses, the architectural uh, work that has been done for these mud houses. Uh, I think I had to give more attention and more work for that. All this heritage we need to 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 give uh, to shed the light on. So these points here, th this this points that the, the heritage that leaves uh, uh, artistic and uh, beauty in our everyday life in every single sec section of our community. Uh, the three plus one here uh, is covering these points, the heritage and the mud houses. Um, this is, uh, I tried to describe it in this visual art, and that's why I uh, named it three plus one. That's uh, great. God uh, give you health, Mr. Ali. This uh, uh, discussion today was very fruitful. We had uh, many uh, new things. I was just want to comment one thing is Mohammed Salim, he might he rest in peace. Uh, uh, when he came back from Italy, he inspired uh, the uh, art uh, uh, culture in uh, Riyadh, and he had uh, this uh, event in uh, um, the King, uh, Al Saud Kingdom uh, exhibition. It was a turning point in the visual art in, Arab, in Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia, and he made this turning point in this hall. We are very thankful for that. We tried to collaborate, we tried to help, and I would like to thank him for that. Thank you, Mr. Ali. A last word from you, Najla, in less than half a minute. I won't be long. I would just need to clarify uh, something about horizonism that is included in the book that you have introduced this um, in, in, in this discussion today. Um, the horizonism art is not only for painting. My father said uh, that you can uh, realize the horizonism in many um, many styles, not only in a painting, and not, not in a drawing. Uh, many has asked him how to transform the horizonism in from a, an artwork painting to uh, um, an, uh, an a light artwork. Uh, in the book, uh, it is meant that you can transform that uh, in any material, in any style. And it was a real opportunity to see this concept, uh, uh, this transformation that has been uh, um, said by my father in Nuriria today. Thank you. Thank uh, Dr. Iman. Uh, I'm really thankful for you. And thanks, thanks to everyone who contributed for this event. Thank you.
Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, you all for all those who helped uh, in organizing this uh, uh, event. Uh, let's uh, say that uh, uh, the art is something that needs us to make a stand and uh, change things. <laughs> Thank you.